Hey guys, so we're going to learn how to use the x and y values and the width and height values in order to perfectly align all of our stuff in InDesign. Um, this is super, super useful. Highly recommend using it. So let's start by clicking on an object. Be careful that you're selecting the text box, not clicking twice to get into the text. And you can see over here in the properties bar that I have x value, y value, width, and height. So, um, the first thing I want to do before I start using X and Y values is select this, um, I guess this, these cross lines from the very top and drop them on the top left corner and just kind of unclick, drag and drop and unclick at the top left corner. And what that does is that sets this value as zero, zero. Um, if this is not popping up for you, you should come down over here to click view options and be sure that rulers is clicked with a check mark. Once you have that, we can check a bunch of different things. So our columns on five column pages are all 11 P6 wide. Um, you should probably know that measurement by heart. Which And there are they are each separated by a pica. So X values, the first column should always start at zero. The second column should always start at 12 P6 X value. The third at 25, P0, fourth at 37, P6, and the fifth at 50, P0. Um, but sometimes these are going to get a little misaligned while you're just fussing with things, dragging it around. Say if I, you know, I, I accidentally do that or that or whatever, I think, oh, that doesn't look right. I could drag it, but in order to make sure it's perfectly aligned, I can also just go here and say 50, and I know that's perfectly right. Um, y value wise, I think set Y value at which they start, but generally you're going to want the top ones, excluding the first column with the byline, to all be aligned. And you can see right now, sometimes I like to drag these just to kind of check alignment, although you have to be sure not to drop it or it will reset the zero, 0 at a place where you don't really want it. But you can see right now, it looks like the second and fourth are aligned. The fifth one looks a tiny bit off, and the fourth one is very off, and we'll deal with the byline and the first line after we do all the rest. So let's start with that third column. We want to start at the same y value as the other two. We can see that's 11p 10.4. So I'm just going to go in here and write 11p 10.4. But now it's too short. So I can drag it like this. Um, but in order to ensure that it's exactly the same height, I can also go here, look at the height of this column, which is 26p 8.4. And I can just enter that here, 26 p 8.4 and it'll make it shorter cutting off whatever was too much at the bottom now i can go do the same thing with this one what height what y value do we want it 11 p 10.4 this one's at 12 p 0 not what we want and p 10.4 and is it the right height 26 p 8.4 26 p 8.4 perfect now with this what you want is you want the byline the top of the byline to align with the top of this text. And so we can say that we want the bylines y value to be um, 11, sorry, 11p 10.4. And so that should be lining up perfectly. And then you want about that much space between the text and the byline. And then it's not as easy to ensure that it lines up at the bottom um, for this first column since it's a different height. You can do the math. You can figure out how tall this is and does how tall this is compared to that. And to figure out that difference and then know that that's how much lower down on the page it needs to be. Um, that's a bit of a pain, but it's probably the most accurate way to do it. You can also use these lines to drag it back. Be sure they are all lined up. It looks like I did a pretty good job making sure they were all lined up. And then you can just kind of fuss with making the height a little bit longer or shorter, a little bit at a time until it's perfectly aligned. Another thing that gets off sometimes, just while you're dragging it around, placing photos, etc., sometimes you see columns that are just a little bit like that. And they look pretty good, but you know, you can see that gap's a little bigger. And you should, before you say they're ready for PDFing or before the, you turn in the draft, you should just check all the columns. And you can see this one's now 11p 2.6 not what we want. We're going to say it's 11p6. So that's kind of your very basic introduction to these things. They're really useful in a number of other ways, though. I know sometimes it's annoying to have to know the numbers and do this 
you know, kind of basic math, which is why I use Google's calculator sometimes. <laughs> um, but it really, it adds some good precision. Say, for instance, I'm going to insert a photo. Um, we'll call this a photo because I am too lazy to go find one. Right, and I want this, the edge of the photo, to line up perfectly with the edge of this column. So how wide should this photo be? Well, I know that I want it to be the width of two columns plus the gap between. Each column is 11p6, so 11p6 times 2 is 23 picas plus the gap between is 1 pica, so I know that I want this to be 24 picas wide. And I want it to start at the same x value as this, which is 37p6. So I'm just going to go back over here and say 37p6. There's a similar principle with window quotes. Window quotes, so we have, we're going, we, bleh, we will have a separate video on window quotes, but one thing that you should keep in mind is they should generally be aligned with the right of a column. So right now, it doesn't look perfectly aligned with, sorry, they should be aligned with the left side of the column. It's not right, I don't know left from right. So that these, so that that edge and that edge are aligned. Um, so say I want it here, but I can see that the x value right now is 12p4.5, whereas I know that this one is the proper one at 12p6, so I'm just going to change that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the x, y, w, h values. They're pretty, pretty simple. They're also very good for fussing because when you, say, use your uh, arrow keys to move this to one side or the other, it moves it by... P1, but if you want to move it by less than P1 or make it shorter or wider by less than P1, anything like that, uh, X, Y, W, H values come in handy because they can do it to a really, really excellent 